Hello, my friends. I honestly don't know how to comment on this, but the front continues to move unfavorably for the Ukrainian armed forces. Unfortunately, Russia has made further gains today, and they are substantial. Over the past week, Russian forces have been taken another 167 square kilometers, and it's likely this is just the beginning. According to preliminary forecasts about the U.S. election results, support for Ukraine is expected to weaken no matter the outcome. If Trump wins, it may lead to a difficult settlement of the war involving territorial concessions. If Harris wins, the U.S. will still face challenges in maintaining substantial financial support through Congress, especially with Johnson's uh, recent statements. All this suggests that uh, opposition will likely block further assistance to Ukraine, meaning that territorial losses could only increase in the future. Uh, but overnight, uh, Russian forces reported new gains along the front line. Let's start with the border situation where there is something interesting news. In the Bryansk uh, region, reports claim that foreign missionaries attempted to enter the village of uh, Manev. So, which is something here. Uh, and here is what they are saying. Uh, 30 foreign missionaries from the Ukrainian armed forces tried to break into Bryansk in the vicinity of Manev, Klimova district. First, they launched an attack with about 20 drones. Then they advanced uh, without heavy equipment support, likely due to the swampy terrain. The group reportedly spoke in English, including Swedes, Poles, Venezuelans, and the Brits. The enemy was repelled and forced back. Uh, this could be an attempt to escalate tensions and justify the appearance of North Korean troops along the border. Alternatively, it might provide a pretext for Russia to claim they are forced to defend and move further into the Chernihiv region. For now, we'll wait to see how things unfold. In the Kursk uh, direction, Russian forces continue shelling the border area, uh, but there have been no changes on the front line or reports of any major assaults. In the Kharkiv direction, Russian forces have once again intensified the shelling, with airstrikes causing more casualties. The bombardment of border villages also continues, although no new offensives are underway. Meanwhile, battles persist in Vovchansk and near the village of Staritsa, though the front line remains unchanged here. Uh, now moving to the more active Pokrovsk direction, there is a lot to update. The Russian forces are attempting assaults on Mirolubivka, Promyn, uh, then Vozdvizhenka and around the outskirts of Mirnograd. Uh, with attacks ongoing near Lysivka as well. The situation here is challenging, but stable. Uh, however, further south, there has been confirmed Russian progress in Selidove, uh, where they've advanced another 1 km 600 meters, effectively gaining control over most of the city. They are also making strides uh, near Vishneve, pushing another 1 km and 200 meters past the road and reportedly entering the outskirts. Additionally, Russian troops have managed to advance 900 meters uh, beyond Hernik and Ismailivka, gradually worsening the situation. The Ukrainian armed forces are slowly uh, being forced to retreat with particularly heavy fighting around Novoselidivka, where clashes continue. In the direction of Kurakhova, Russian forces have also made gains. Uh, just yesterday, they began assaults toward the village of Yelizavetivka, and today reports confirm they've advanced 2 kilometers 700 meters into this area, taking significant open territory. Meanwhile, attempts to push toward the village of Dalne continue, though with no reported change. Uh, the situation near Buhledar, however, is dire. 
Russian forces have taken nearly half of Bohoyavlinka and are advancing across nearby fields with an approximate 5 kilometers and 600 meters gain. Fields uh, between Novokrainka and Bohoyavlinka have also partially fallen under their control with an additional 3 km advance and a push extending 6.5 km in width. Uh, further, Russian troops have managed to gain another 2 km 100 m uh, toward Shakhtarske. Interestingly, uh, the general staff hasn't mentioned any assaults here, but the advance is clear. Uh, if we observe how Russian forces extend their front line, it's evident they are pushing directly toward villages without skirting around fields to encircle them. The Ukrainian armed forces haven't uh, mounted counterattacks to cut off these advances, suggesting that Russian forces may have a numerical advantage, enable them to breach defenses swiftly. Uh, a look at the Ukrainian defense positions uh, map uh, reveals minimal fortified areas in this region, likely just small trenches and some field positions. Serious defensive lines are further north, while Russian troops advance from the east, taking over positions as they go. Uh, following the bridges near Selidove, Tsukurine, and Yernik, they are now close to surrounding key areas, compromising defenses in the region significantly. Uh, if this rate of Russian advancement uh, continues, they could soon reach uh, Dnipropetrovsk region, where no major fortifications have been observed, though it's hoped uh, some exist. The distance from Shakhtarsk uh, to Dachne into the Dnipropetrovsk region uh, is now, now only 22 kilometers which leaves little buffer zone for Ukrainian forces to regroup. In the Zaporizhia direction, uh, only Shalon continues at the moment with no significant changes in the situation and no new attacks reported. In the Kherson direction, Russian forces are continuing their attempts to advance onto the islands and are shallowing the right bank, but so far they've made no notable progress. Uh, returning to the act of France, we move to the Turetsk direction. Although there have been no shifts in the front line in the past day, uh, Russian forces are continuing to push in and are attempting to storm the outskirts of Sherbinivka. The Ukrainian armed forces are doing everything possible to maintain their defense. In the direction of Chasivyar, Shalin continues, but no new offensive actions have been reported and the front line has remained stable over the past day. In the Siversk direction, the situation in Bilohorivka is extremely challenging. Russian forces are aiming to fully capture the settlement and by strengthening uh, the front line, they are moving closer to Siversk, from which they intend to advance towards Slovyansk. For now, the front line has remained unchanged over the past day, but signs of Russian success are becoming evident. We'll see how the situation develops further. In the Crimea direction, after prolonged fighting, Russian forces have also started to make some progress. They are advancing gradually, but as of today, all attacks have paused and only shelling is currently reported. In the Borova direction, Russian forces are assaulting Vishneva and Pershotravneva. For now, the situation has somewhat stabilized, with no significant breakthroughs by Russian forces, though the fighting continues. Uh, Through the south, uh, no new attacks have been reported, as Russian troops prepare for additional assaults. In the Kupiansk direction, the situation is deteriorating as Russian forces uh, push towards uh, Kindrashivka, a concerning development. Heavy fighting is also ongoing near Sankivka with assaults on Petropavlivka and continuous shelling in the area. 
southward. Uh, uh, so uh, the Russians uh, continue um, their storms on Kruhlekivka and pushing towards uh, Zagryzove. Although the front line hasn't shifted, the situation remains highly tense. Russian forces have recorded gains in this area previously and are now attempting to break through Ukrainian defenses fully, aiming to reach the nearby water barrier. And that's all from me. So please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.